I've said it before. I'll say it again. I will die on this hill. Creating incredible work is not marketing. It will not bring in the clients. You still need to get out there and market your business. If you want to dig deeper in this conversation, Heather is back on the podcast and it's a good one. So stay tuned. I'm Nicole Bagley, a zoological animal trainer turned pet and family photographer. Back in 2010, I embarked on my own adventure in photography, transforming a bootstrapping startup into a thriving six-figure business by 2012. Since then, my mission has been to empower photographers like you, sharing the knowledge and strategies that have helped me help thousands of photographers build their own profitable businesses. I believe that achieving two to $3,000 sales is your fastest route to six-figure businesses, that any technically proficient photographer can consistently hit four-figure sales, and no matter if you want photography to be your full-time passion or a part-time pursuit, profitability is possible. If you're a portrait photographer aspiring to craft a business that aligns perfectly with the life you envision, then you're in exactly the right place. With over 350,000 downloads, Welcome to the Freedom Focus Photography Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Freedom Focus Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Bagley, and today we have Heather Lawton back with us. And it has been entirely too long because, Heather, I have looked at the last time you were on the podcast, and it was July 2nd. Why? What's happening? I don't know. You went on vacation this summer. Oh my gosh, you are hilarious. I went on one vacation this summer and you are literally gone every other week in Europe. <laughs> Not every other week, okay. every other month, maybe this year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm glad to be back. I sure have missed you. I'm glad we're back on the podcast. What are we tackling today? Uh, all right. So I don't know if you have heard this uh, stated by many of our people as much as I have. But there seems to be a very deep-seated belief that the key to building your business is to improve your photography. Point oh, blank, full stop. Yes, on. yes I've heard yes. this. Yep, yep. And also, I mean, I think, gosh, there's so many things. I mean, photographers love to improve their craft, right? Which, okay, you guys, before you come at us, we're not saying that you should be happy with crappy work, that you shouldn't want to improve your craft, that you shouldn't want to learn new techniques. I fully um, embrace all of those things and encourage you to do so. The challenge becomes when you start to think that improving your craft is going to lead to more clients because improving our craft is not marketing. Oh, interesting. Okay. What do you think? The thought behind the thought is, so people are thinking, well, people aren't hiring me because my photos aren't good enough. So that must be why I'm not getting clients. Potentially. I think it goes a little bit deeper though, where they're starting to think that maybe their thought is the fastest way or the best way to get clients is to improve my work. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Okay. When you say it like that, I vehemently <laughs> disagree. Like that, <laughs> that is a thought error. That just does not make any logical sense to me based on my experience. Because while photos matter, they don't, they aren't just by themselves going to grow your business. Because back to what you said, actually, okay, I see the tie in, I see it. Is that, that's not a marketing strategy. Like making mm -hmm. your photos better is important, no question. But that's not how you market your business. It's not how you, you get out in your community, you meet people, you tell them you're a photographer, you make an offer. Getting better photos will not ever do that for you. I would argue, oh, I feel like I feel a really bold statement coming on. I don't, I don't know how to say this, except that it's just flawed logic. Having, getting better photos is important, but will not get you clients, period. Better photos is not marketing. Period. There it is. Yeah. That's what I want to say. That's yeah. the bold statement. I mean, because how many, how many um, photographers do you guys know that are amazing artists that struggle to get clients or struggle to get clients that will pay them reasonable wages? Like, and the same thing, how many times have you seen a photographer that you're like, I'm sorry, that person's making how much? Wait, what? 
because the photos aren't related. There is a level of technical expertise. All right. So yes, you have to like, <laughs> although I would even argue based on my experience from my first year or two of business, Heather, that you don't even need <laughs> technically proficient work because mine was not. And somehow I still had clients and, and grew your business. I'm yeah. not saying you guys should go out and do that, but, um, but I do, uh, that's a whole nother soapbox. I do think that it is worth charging, even if it is that low cost, all inclusive when you're learning to get paid while you're learning, um, so that you can move your business up because I think there is, all right, here's where I think this logic actually stems from, which it, it does make sense. But people take it to an extreme, Heather, as, as we all do, because we're humans. Um, I believe firmly, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I will die on this hill, that when you are starting your photography business, it is okay to be all-inclusive, low cost, like 250 bucks, here's some digital files, great. You get paid for learning your craft. You get some money into your business that you can reinvest into a website, reinvest into courses to learn business and craft. And... Uh, you know, continuing to get better with things. And then you're moving your business up through like four levels. You start to add products, you get to that $2,000 plus average sale. And then if you want, you go into that Lux level. Now, if you're trying to get $5,000 sales on the regular, yes, your work needs to be good. Does it need to be groundbreaking best work that anyone's ever seen? Like the only photographer on the planet that's doing some particular technique? No. It does not need to be that, but it does need to be good and dialed in for a style a little bit. And even more importantly, you need to be offering high-end um, products and an experience that goes along with that price tag. So as that price tag goes up, theoretically, our work should get a little bit better. But more important than that is the value that goes along with that price tag and the experience we are giving our clients. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> No, I agree with that a hundred percent. It's like the value is not just in the photos. It's not just right. like my photos get better. So my value increases. It's the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom that you bring to the table that over time and the products you create that mm -hmm. add to that value that warrant that price. So you had said something a few moments ago that gosh, rang so true for me. When I first started my business 20 years ago, I remember following these Wedding photographers in Southern California, which at the time, I don't know what it's like now, was the mecca for the best wedding photographers in the world. It was just amazing. And there were a lot of new people, young, new, hip people on the scene. And there was one in particular whose work was, I mean, I don't even know if I want to say average. It was mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. And he was on fire. He had a fully booked schedule. Everybody loved him. He was speaking, he was teaching, he was doing all of these things. And I just sat there scratching my head because I was new. I thought that, well, don't you need really good photos to be at that level? And then I saw other photographers, actually a close friend of mine in Pittsburgh that was phenomenal, phenomenal, and just couldn't seem to get her business dialed in. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, there is proof. I learned this pretty early on. There is absolute proof that the quality of the photos, well, they matter, but maybe not as much as we think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I want to dig into the thoughts around this a little bit too. So our first thought, right, is better photos is my fastest way to get new clients. And then the next thought is, well, wait, now you've gotten better photos and the clients are not coming in because we know better photos is not marketing. Um, so you've gotten better photos, clients are not coming in. Now what's your thought? It doesn't work. Nothing is working or, or nobody will pay my prices. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, my prices are too high. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You at this point, I imagine many photographers would feel very disheartened mm -hmm. and disillusioned because if the thought was, well, I just need to get better photos and then I'll get more clients. So you do that work and mm -hmm. then it doesn't happen. You're like, what the heck? I thought yeah. that was the key. What do I do now? Well, there's going to be this like transition phase where you just, you you just feel defeated. I don't know how else to say it. And so you're like, well, that didn't work. What else could it be? And you sort of spin and ruminate. Then you might come to the conclusion, well, that's my pricing. It's people don't want to pay these prices. And you go down this spiral of the pricing. And the interesting thing about this, Nicole, is 
<laughs> when I'm teaching, I always say like the two biggest things that do not matter in your success are your photos and your prices. <laughs> <laughs> it's really never about either one of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being very dramatic and exaggerating. You understand what I'm saying? Of course your prices matter and the photos matter. I'm afraid somebody's going to take me very literally, but I'm speaking on extreme ends. Mm -hmm. It's just not about the quality of the photos. And we've learned this because you got better and you, you didn't get the clients. Mm -hmm. And so now you go to the pricing and you blame the pricing and you blame the economy. Well, then what happens? This is dangerous because when it was about the photos, you had some hope because you had, you, you could empower yourself to say, I'll just get better. I'll, yep. I'll just improve my craft. But now when you get to this pricing and you say, or the economy and you blame, you know, these outside nebulous forces, then you're, you feel very disempowered. If you combine disheartened with disempowered, you are going to get some pretty terrible thoughts and feelings, which are going to produce zero results because why would you do anything? Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to look at different, different avenues, different things that you're thinking, different ways and accepting that, okay, but what if that's not it? What if it's not my photos and it's not the pricing? And what if you could just get really curious here and say, how can I figure out what, what else might be going on here that I could actually impact? Yes. Yes. Do we want to give some people some like start to kind of role play this out or go and go down this hole of like rabbit hole of what does that look like? So, you know, a, we would have the thoughts that, um, well, I guess what's a better thought instead of, um, improving my work is the fastest way to get more clients. Maybe the better thought is meeting more people, telling them a photographer and making them an offer is the fastest way to book more clients. <laughs> well, that's certainly my approach. That's what we teach inside of Elevate. That's the simple business approach. It's part of the marketing, marketing method that I teach. It's like <laughs> the main thing. If you uh -huh. just go out and meet people, tell them you're a photographer, make them an offer. That's what gets you clients. Like mm -hmm. period. That is marketing. It's not about adjusting your offer. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I've got to change the pricing. Maybe I'm giving too much. Maybe I'm giving too little. Maybe it's the economy. And you're trying all of these strategies that just aren't going to work like you think because they're coming from a place of lack and scarcity. Mm -hmm. But when you have the thought, oh, I just need to meet people and tell them what I do and, and offer this as a service, like actually as I'm serving mm -hmm. someone, and then all of a sudden you start to get caught. Listen, I got to tell you, it is so dramatically, so much easier than people think. And every time somebody will, you know, post a win inside of Elevate, which by the way, is very, very often. They will say some version of, I should have just listened to Heather from the beginning. Heather's right. Listen to Heather. All you have to do is go meet people. It's so simple that I think people don't want to believe it or that they feel better if it's more complex or mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, we can dig into that in another episode, but something's going on there that as I say these words, just go meet people. There's, there are people listening. They're like not receiving that, you know, just... Well, not hearing it. I think it's because of the fear of what that entails. So when it's, I have to improve my, uh, my photos, like that's the key that feels good. And like you said, empowering, I can do something about it. And it's kind of fun, right? Cause most of us got into this because we like taking photos. So we want to do that. Most of us got into this maybe because we like taking photos more than we like to talk to people. So then when we're saying, hey, go out and talk to people, you're like, for the love, no. that is not why I got into this job or what this business, but that is the actual fastest way forward. But I think, yeah, people don't want to receive it because it's not the fuzzy fun thing that they pictured doing with their business. I think they had this romanticized version of what a photography business looks like, which is I create pretty things. I maybe post a couple images on social media. People find my website and book me. So simple, Prince right? <laughs> Except it doesn't work. You think yeah. it's not that straightforward and it's simple, but it's actually not because you're making it harder because it doesn't work. Yeah. And if you would just meet people, and when I say meet people, Nicole, I am legitimately saying get out of your house. Like okay. physically go somewhere and meet people in person. I do, When I teach, the way I teach offers inside of Elevate is I don't teach it like posting on social media because posting on social media is just awareness marketing, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. 
There's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't get you clients. What gets you clients is making offers directly to people. So mm -hmm. I'll say on a strategy call, how many offers did you make this week? And people will put in some numbers and I'll say, okay, just to be clear, these are people that you went out and spoke to either directly face-to-face -face or in an email one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. And you said, let's get you scheduled for a photo session. Here's the information. How many people directly did you make offers to? And then all of a sudden the chat lights up. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. And then I say, well, then are you really surprised that you're not getting clients when you're yeah. not making any offers? You're just waiting for inquiries. That's another thing. People think that like, oh, I have my social media presence. I have my website. So I just need to wait for, wait, where are the inquiries? Heather, I'm not getting any inquiries. Inquiries are down. Inquiries are down. I don't, I don't know how you approached this back in the day. Inquiries were important, but I never, ever waited for them. Because you can't control it. You have, right. you're just, it's a waiting game. I was out getting clients. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think we have our goals all wrong too, or people will be like, my goal is to get 15 inquiries a month. No, your goal should be to do the action that results in 15 inquiries a month, which is talking to people. Actually, one of our students in Elevate, hashtag Amanda saves the day. You guys inherit the dog community. Remember, Amanda is our community manager for quite a few years. We love her. She's still super active inside of Elevate. And she took it upon herself and is sharing with the group with her daily progress to make 150 offers in 30 days. And it does not count sending an email blast. And like she direct is, offers to direct people via she, email, in person, all the things. She is amazing. She is very, a very, very long time active member of Elevate and a good friend of ours. She taught to me about this and she's sharing every step of the way. I mean, if ever you wanted to get into Elevate or you're thinking about getting into Elevate, now is the time because <laughs> Amanda is post 150 offers. I, I was like, whoa, that, that even sounds ambitious for me. I love it. <laughs> so she's posting every day. And she also yesterday, I think she posted about something and something didn't work and she pivoted immediately. Uh -huh. She did something else. And I thought, what a great challenge to make 150 offers. Listen, there is no doubt in my mind, she is going to get clients. Oh, 100%. Huh? Yeah, she's going to get a lot of clients. And I foresee even her getting enough clients before the end of the 150 offers that she's like, oh, I better slow down with these offers so I can, so I can serve all these clients. <laughs> yeah, or she, you know, as of this recording, this is September, she fills her schedule for the rest of the year. Our booking next Correct. year. Yeah. yeah. She starts filling her spring schedule ahead of time. I just want people to like ask themselves, how would that feel mm. to have your fall all lined out and to even start booking next year into January and February and March? Like that would feel amazing. So mm -hmm. what would you need to think or believe in order to make that happen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. The other thing I want to like, there's kind of that fork in the road of with this beliefs of like, this is the best marketing. But then also the thoughts that happen when you get the great work, you're putting it out there, you're not getting clients and you start to think and blame your pricing. Mm. So what can we do besides just lower our pricing and try to compete on price, which is a race to the bottom? Like you cannot do that. So how the heck do you get your belief behind that price and, and share that with your client? Okay. First of all, I do think it's important that you love your pricing. Mm -hmm. I have something that I, in Elevate, I call it professional pricing. I was going to call it perfect pricing, but it's, it's like individualized for mm -hmm. each person, right? Because obviously I don't believe there's a right or wrong way. Same. Professional pricing to me is pricing that works with your business, your clients, and your season. And most importantly, you love it. Mm -hmm. If you are struggling to get clients, I would like venture to say you're probably struggling with your pricing in that you don't love it or you don't fully believe in it. So the first mm -hmm. step would be to get really committed to that pricing. I'm not, how do I say this, Nicole? I'm not like totally against someone changing their pricing, but it has to be for the right reasons. Yeah. And I, and I just don't want people to go there because they think that's how they're going to get clients. You have to love your pricing so much that you, you cannot, let me say it this way. You cannot sell your packages if you don't sell yourself first. And if you don't believe in the value your packages deliver. 
Of course. How would you sell? How would I sell something to you? I don't believe in because mm -hmm. most of our people operate with integrity, meaning none of them are, you know, criminals. Right. Right. Which is why they get so in their head about the pricing, the value. And oh my gosh, am I charging too much? And what are people going to think about me? Like yes. if you were a, a, I don't know, sleazy schmoozer, I don't know what word criminal what's the, there's another word. Anyway, if you're out there fleecing people, you don't care. You don't care what people yes. think about it. I'm pretty sure the scammers do not care. You are not one. So therefore you care. Your driveway bandits, Heather, they didn't care. That's right. They did not care. They <laughs> swindled us with some asphalt. I call them the asphalt bandits. They're pirates. They were here. I don't know if we ever told that full story, but at some point we really need to have that conversation. Because <laughs> it was a really, it was a really good lesson in sales too, because they were experts at what they were oh, doing. Yeah. Not in a good way. <laughs> Yeah. So that was fascinating. That, that was definitely not how to win word of mouth. No, uh, no. <laughs> so I, I think it starts with loving your prices and being so excited about them because if you don't love your pricing, you're not going to be excited to share it. Yeah. So it makes sense to me when people don't want to talk about money or pricing. All that does is show me that they're not sold themselves mm -hmm. on their pricing. So I would start there. I have the, something called the belief triad I teach. I've taught it several times, but and part of the belief triad is once you're sold on yourself and your pricing, you have to believe that people are ready, willing, and able to pay. Mm -hmm. So you believe in your pricing, people are ready, willing, and able to pay, and you're coming from a place of, I'm in demand. I did a training called in demand, what, how, what it would look like to be an in demand photographer. When you have those things lined up, it's almost like a combination lock, you know, where you're like moving, they all like click into place those things start to click into place, you will get clients. And you, you're going to say to me, I know this, you're going to say, but how? And I'm going to say, you have to love your pricing. You have to believe that people are ready, willing, and able to pay. And you have to believe that you're in demand and put yourself out there. That is the how. That, that, but everybody wants this just like, give me this one step, this strategy, mm -hmm. and I promise I'll do it. Okay, go love your prices. Step one. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And so, gosh, all right. I have a couple thoughts here coming up. Um, the loving their prices can be really, really challenging based on what money stories they have. Yes. Which is like why this is so, it feels insidious because people were like, just tell me how. And, and action is not gonna, this is from action girl, by the way. And action is not going to help you here if you don't have that belief underneath. So like we did that episode with Carrie where we kind of dove into yes. why she had a hard time of selling artwork um, to her portrait clients and how it stemmed from how she grew up and the beliefs that formed when she was a kid, you guys. And she'd been trying to uncover this for like 40 years. And it's such a good episode. It is episode 256, Money Story Shattering with Heather and Carrie. It is so good. Go listen. But anyway, you have to fully believe in that. And I think one way you can start to believe in that is start to really ask yourself, what am I bringing to the table that other people aren't? I have a quick story that I want to share. And this happens a lot. How many times do you guys see someone that you know, or maybe you were even talking to about doing a session all of a sudden post pictures from another photographer that are good photos. And then you look that photographer up and it's like low cost, all inclusive. And you want to like bash your head into the wall. Just me, just me. Sounds a little extreme, but I'm with you. But you're just like, why? And then, well, then what happens? What thoughts does my brain serve me? See, no one's going to pay your prices anymore. See the era to me, you guys, this, this still happens to me recently. The era of artwork is over. Everybody just wants digital files. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Like all the things. And then it goes on for a few minutes and I'm like, stop, stop. How am I different? And why is my price worth what it is where that isn't? Because I have the best products in the industry. You can't get them unless through me, like they are not open to the public. Um, also I have the design expertise to help you design something for your room. Also, I could photograph your family and your dog. Also like the list goes on and on and on of how I can serve my clients. Um, 
where then I can drop back into the belief of like, no, my pricing is worth what it is. It hundred percent has that value and the right people will pay. it. You know what happened there that I noticed I'm working on this concept in Elevate, and it's actually coming up in our coach week, our coachathon. Is this idea of your self concept? Mm -hmm. Is you switched when your when your brain fired off all of these yeah. things? You were in what I call like amateur mode. Mm -hmm. You're like where your thoughts and your emotions drive your behaviors and your decisions, and then you quickly switched to professional mode, where you said like I have access to these products, my services, my experience, mm -hmm. I can do all of these things. When you think like a professional photographer, you act like one. Mm -hmm. When you think like an amateur or a hobbyist, or you don't believe that you are a professional, then when you think that way, that leads to your feelings and your actions. And then you have, you know, an emotional reaction, which listen, uh, so do I. And then you take, you, you get these results that don't line up because you're not acting from a place of certainty that you're a professional. By the way, I think this is the result of imposter syndrome as well. Mm. that this like you know we're, we're a fraud because you're you're trying to act like a professional but you're actually an amateur so when you view yourself this is what i want people to do is when you start all of these feelings all of these feelings come up about the, the pricing or the value of your work or whatever i just want you to ask yourself am i thinking like a professional photographer mm. how am i thinking could you like picture someone that you see as a professional photographer like someone that you have categorized in that bucket and say how would that person react right now like you i think they should use you i think they should say like what would nicole do or think here as a professional photographer and not the not the nicole that reacts you know from her brain right 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 the nicole's monkey brain <laughs> right right the, the nicole that took a minute yeah and then reframed it with what she does bring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Nicole. Yeah. Like, and we've even had this, I forget who it was, someone in Elevate that had a consult with somebody that like the, what the person wanted was so wildly, like they had no idea, no idea what goes into these types of things. And like they had their conversation and it was just not going to be a fit. And so like, can you imagine like the industry's biggest photographers having a conversation like that? And like, it's not a right fit. Do you think they're going home? Like, maybe I should lower my prices. Oh man, <laughs> never going to book me again. Right. They're just like, oh, it's okay. All right. Like moving on. They just don't even give it a second thought. Well, I think that's because yes, because they're like, I'm thinking like a professional and I believe that I'm in demand. We get all, we get all tied up in knots when we're like thinking this is the only, this is the only client that's con contacted me in weeks. This is going to be the only inquiry I have. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? When, if you think, okay, next, if you're yeah. able to yep. say like, okay, bummer, they don't get it. No problem. Next, please. Yep. If you believe that those, those clients were there and they were in demand, it wouldn't even cross your mind to get upset about it. Yep. Yep. For sure. Oh my gosh. Hey, can I share just real, real quick? Yeah. I had a thought about this this morning. This is so random, not totally random. I heard somebody else mention it, but did you ever watch the show Deadliest Catch? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're in the Bering Sea. They're hunting for Alaska king crabs. It's the most dangerous job in the world. Uh -huh. Side note, my dad did that job for a while. He was in oh, Alaska. Really? Yeah. This was in the mid sixties. He hitchhiked to Alaska. Somehow this just worked surprise me. But yeah. Yeah. My dad <laughs> has a lot of interesting stories. Anyway, it's very, it's, I mean, the show is called deadliest catch because yeah. people die on these boats. Okay. Why in the world would these captains and their crew get on those boats and go out to the Bering Sea in a storm? By the way, I think the Bering Sea like normally is a storm. <laughs> Certainly when they're out there, I think it's winter time that they're catching the snow crab at least. It's always insane. Uh-huh. Why would they do that? Mm, uh, probably they need the money. And they like a, money. They yeah. make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they believe, number one, there are crab in the sea. Mm -hmm. Okay. They wouldn't go out there if they didn't think there were any crab. True. True. Okay. They risk their lives to go out there and get crab because they know there are crab. They get on these ships like willingly, which is bizarre. They go out there. They fish, they get these crabs, they believe there are crabs. Why? Why is that important? 
because they believe there's someone on shore that's going to buy them for a lot of money. Yep. Right. To make a lot of money. To make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. There is no planet on which someone would get onto one of those boats if they were thinking, oh, nobody's going to pay my prices. Yeah. No one's going to buy this crab. No one's going to buy this. There's no crab out here and no one's going to buy it. There, I can't find any crab. Mm-hmm. And even if I do, no one's going to buy it. They're not, oh, these prices well, and are You've worth- seen it too, where they like put down a whole string of pots and they pull them up and there's nothing. Nothing. Do they turn the ship around and go back in? Nope. Nope. They, they keep going. Somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. And why? Because they believe they are in demand on the shore. Yeah. And that they know that the crab are there somewhere. Although I did just read an article that I, I didn't actually get to read the whole article. I just saw the headline um, that there's a whole bunch of the crab populations have like crashed. So oh there might not be as many crabs. Okay. All right. But they might not the get on the ship. will go up. They'll get more expensive. Yeah. But these, these people, it's just the craziest thing to me. If you haven't seen that show, go watch it. Just one episode. You'll be like, what are, they're insane. They get on these, these boats to get these crab that are going to make them a ton of money. They make all of their money in this like really short season. Yep. But that's because they believe there are buyers on shore. And I, my guess is these buyers are on shore probably fighting over who gets how many crab. And then there's like pricing wars or whatever. And these ship captains are just sitting back counting all of their dollar bills. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They get on those boats because they believe they're in demand. You would show up. You would not be emotionally upset or worried about where the clients are if you believed they were there. You would also not hesitate to let people know about your services if you believed the people wanted them. Not for a second. You would not hesitate even for a second. You would the be reason so you excited. Don't, yeah, the reason that you don't say something to somebody is you think that they're going to not want it or they're going to judge you for offering it. Yes. If you're pushy and annoying and they say no and you still keep like, like trying to get them to book, okay, don't do that. I know you're not going don't to. Don't be a creep. Yeah. Yeah. But like, when have you ever, has anyone ever said something like, Hey, did you know about this? And you weren't interested? Like, did you hold it over their head for the next like three months? No, no. You just moved on. So what, if you can believe that people want what you have to offer, which can you think of, I know you have them, those clients that have literally told you how important what you did for them was, can you just like channel that person and be like, let me think about Carol and how much this like means to her now. And I want to give that to other people too. All right, here we go. Yeah, perfect. If that's what you need to do, think of one person who you've served. Mm-hmm. It has been so, I, my guess is a lot of people listening have had that client that has loved them so much. Like it's brought them to tears. The client, mm-hmm. you know, is so moved or they sent you a card or a gift. Mm-hmm. 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 If you think about those people and you're like, well, multiply them, multiply that Carol and think I'm in demand and there's so many of them out there. It becomes like this driving force that propels me into act. Like my thought is like, they need this. Mm -hmm. Like it's my responsibility to put it out there. Mm -hmm. They need this. I am so certain of what I produce and how I can help photographers make money that I will never stop talking about Elevate. I will never stop selling it because I think there's just so much demand out there. I just have to show them, you know, that the money you spend, the people are always like, well, I'm investing this money. And I'm like, yeah, but you're going to make so much more. Mm -hmm. If I can show you how much more money you're going to make, like, why would you not do that? Anyway, I want people to wake up every day and think there are crab in the sea and there are people on shore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A ton of them. And like, if you remove the mind drama, and you just yeah. go catch the crab and sell it to the people on the shore. You are thinking like a professional fisherman, a professional photographer. Mm-hmm. If I just think mm-hmm. like a professional photographer, a professional, no, for real, a professional photographer knows there are clients out there, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. So if then everything flows from that, oh, I just have to think like a professional. How would Nicole approach this? What would she do? What would she say? How would she show? And then just go do that thing. And if you don't know, Come join Elevate or ask me yeah, about powers. Just ask. Free to focus formula. Yeah, just, just, just come ask us. We'll tell you. But, oh my gosh. So good. So I do want to share, which usually I don't mention these things on the actual podcast because it isn't evergreen. Like this is short term, guys, to come grab this secret podcast. If like you want to dig deeper into these beliefs, into 
how you start to reframe our minds to believe that there are crab in the sea, um, you're going to want to be part of this. So if you go to freedomfocusedformula.com slash success, uh, we have a Secrets to Success secret podcast that we just put together. Uh, we don't know how long we're going to have it out there. It's free. Um, basically, you go, you opt in. We pulled, well, Heather pulled some of the, well, after I told her, I'm like, I need more. Give yes. me more. Um, the people want it. Pulled some of her trainings from the Elevate portal into this podcast. This is like number four, four released for free guys. Always been back behind the big elevate wall. Um, but yeah, so we have those, we have conversations with different students. We have uh, some special uh, interviews, special podcasts, all sorts of stuff in there. It is bingeable. It is awesome. It is free. Freedomfocusformula.com slash success go grab it you basically just opt in and listen to it like any other podcast and then we are also upping the ante a little bit more and we are doing the first ever coach week dun, 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 dun. yeah <laughs> september 30th october 1st october 2nd 2 p.m eastern each day there will be a replay however if you want to be coached you kind of need to be there live so it's going to be the opportunity to actually start to dig into your own thoughts. And we're, we're going to start each day with a little bit of a training, but then pivot it into coaching around that item. Um, so to kind of get you thinking about like, what thoughts are we having? Because here's the thing. Most of the time, we don't even know what thoughts we're having. And we certainly don't know what thoughts we're having that are blocking our next steps or the next level of success that we're looking for. So this training is designed to help shine a light on whatever that thought is that's blocking you from your next level and having the access to the coaching to rewrite it. So, and um, I know that a lot of people are thinking, cause they've said it to me. They're like, well, no, I actually know what's holding me back. It's me. It's my thoughts. And here are a few of them, but I want you to consider that episode with Carrie. Mm -hmm. She thought she knew what was holding her back until we had a conversation. That's the power of coaching. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation. I got really curious. She got really curious. She was very vulnerable. She dug really deep to figure out what was actually going on. And it blew, you've got to listen to that podcast. It blew her mind. My mind was blown. Actually just yeah. like being there witnessing it, what happened. So that's why this is important because I know you know some of your thoughts that are holding you back. And I also can guarantee, like 100% guarantee that you are having thoughts you don't realize you're having that are holding you back. It's my job to help you uncover them. I live for it. I love it so much. But the reason I can guarantee this with 100% accuracy is because if you knew, you would have already managed them. Mm -hmm. you, would, you would be at a different level. You would be further ahead in terms of clients or inquiries or revenue, whatever, whatever your gauge is. So I know that you haven't uncovered it yet. It's just fine. It's fine. That's why I'm here. And I want to help you with that. I'm really looking forward to this. I tell Nicole every singular day when I'm coaching in Elevate or doing it one-on-one, -on -one, I'm in my zone of genius because I love it. I just live for these breakthroughs. They're amazing. Yeah. So come join us, freedomfocusformula.com slash coach week, one word. But yeah, that conversation with Carrie is on that secret podcast. We, we curated that one because it was such a good one. So go check it out. Come back and join us. It's going to be awesome. If you're listening to this past September 1st, October 2nd, well, we might do it again. <laughs> we probably have but something else it'll brewing. Be, it'll be sometime. So just, just go check out those links. There'll be either a wait list there or we'll let you know what's going on. Come join us inside Elevate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was talking to someone last week who it was an Elevate Lifeline. So we do these private one-on-one -on -one calls inside of Elevate with myself and with coaches. She came to me with some challenges that were pretty big and she was, she was pretty upset and we talked, we were talking through them and she's like, but I know it's this, this, and this. And I was like, yeah, okay. And what about what's driving this feeling or this behavior, you know, and what about this anyway, 30 minutes, Nicole, 30 minutes, she's in tears and she's like, can I have your address? I need to send you a gift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She said, can I have your address? I need to send you something. I'm assuming it's a gift. 
I mean, I guess it could be something else, but anyway, it's just the power of like diving into something. I walk around all the time and I see people and I'm like, listen, if you could just give me 20 minutes, I can solve any problem, any problem. <laughs> just tell me what's going on with you and we can talk it through. Superpower. Superpower. And I, I feel this very strong need like a responsibility to serve others and to put it out there and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come from a place of ego at all. If that's what you're hearing, you're just misunderstanding. I feel very compelled to help people change their lives. You know, I work with photographers, but I mean, somebody said to me today, do you just work with photography clients? And I said, well, mostly, yes, I do have a few clients that aren't photographers. But what you'll find is that it becomes so much bigger than that because there's always a theme. There's always a thread. It's like, it's like your thoughts around money, right? If you are not making the money you want with photography, I promise you it's because you have thoughts about money that aren't serving you that don't come from photography. Mm -hmm. So we need to find them. We need to uncover them, bring awareness to it, and then, you know, see what, see what we can reframe. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. So come join us. In the meantime, go grab that secret podcast, com slash success. And Heather, we will make sure we do not wait three more months. I guess it's only been two months. Regardless, much too long. We won't make that mistake again to have you. Okay. I don't think I'll let that happen either. I didn't realize <laughs> it had been that long either. All right, everybody. Good to see you. And we'll see you next week.